Welcome to the Spiritual Development Channel. I'm Nasi Yashiva, and today we have a very interesting topic. Serious, and it's, I hope that it can touch your heart because it's important to me, and I want you to understand things. Um, the topic is, why do innocent people suffer and die if there is a God? Now, this was placed on my heart when I was watching a debate on does God exist between Peter Singer and John Lennox. And in most of his videos, John Lennox runs through the atheists. And he ran through Peter Singer for much of the conversation. But there was one part of the conversation where Peter Singer put it on him and said, Why does God allow innocent people to die? Not from human error or conflict or wars between humans, but why does natural events like hurricanes, um, natural disasters like earthquakes kill off humans? John Singer said, I cannot answer that question. He said, but I can give you a window into answering the question. And he said, the truth is, when you remove God from the atmosphere, you remove all hope. So though you have no solution to the problem, you remove the hope from the problem if everything is based on evolution and no natural justice or sequence inside of the human existence. So I sat there and watched him struggle with that answer. But before I get into the answer of this topic and discussion, I want to have a conversation, a serious conversation, and something that my son told me. He was 10 years old, and I, um, a couple days ago was his birthday, and he turned 10, and this is the conversation he had with me. We were driving in the car, and he said to me, Abba, which is father, he said, can you help me conquer my fears? And I started to think, we're about to engage in a serious conversation with a 10-year-old, a deep psychological conversation. And he said, because I have many fears. And it, during the day, it's like a deaf angel is flashing and passing by me. But I don't think that it's, it's a threat to me. But I think that it's telling me that I have to conquer my fears. He said, I have too many. He said, people will evolve and I will become obsolete. A 10-year-old said this. And I kid you not. And I asked him what was one of his fears. He said the dark. And I talked to him about the dark. And I gave him some coaching and some advice about the dark. And then his next statement was, I, I don't know if I misread the message that was given to me by God or the angels. But I'm supposed to die in December. As a father, I automatically alert. Like, what's going on? What is he talking about? He said, Abba. I might die in December, but I want to ask you a question. I said, hold on, hold on, you're not scared of dying? He said, no. He said, but Abba, teach me how to die an honorable death. I don't want to just die. I want to die honorably. Now, me as a father, I'm holding back a waterfall of tears. I'm even getting emotional as I'm speaking it now. That's very serious from coming from my son. So when I got to the house, I told every last boy, don't let him sleep alone, especially in December. We're going to stand by him. Nothing is taking this man from us. There goes that level of protection. Now, here goes my answer to why innocent and young people suffer and die. I prayed to God and I said, God, give me an answer. And I was reaching with my intellect and my mind trying to force answers. And then it simply came is that suffering is the force that drives love. Without suffering, the greatest power on the planet, love, will not even exist. What do I mean? If there was no suffering, everyone would be neglected. There would be no reason to pay attention to certain aspects of individuals. If there was no threat to the survival of a person, there would be no purpose to give them attention or give them some of your time or to show them that something is better or something is good. So random acts of chaos, even upon the good, fuels this power called love. Imagine if your child wasn't in threat of running into the street. You would just let them run. Imagine if your child wasn't a threat of losing his life because if they didn't eat the proper things, you would let it eat anything. But this suffering and death 
allows you to tap into something that's greater inside you. And it's called love. So now that gives a definition to love. The greatest love in love truly is not what they teach us today, where it's romantic and you spoil the individual. Because spoiling the individual is exactly what it says it does. It's rotten in the person. But true love is the ultimate protection of something you care for. So with the threat of suffering and death, you can experience the feeling of love. <clears throat> and everything in life is a lesson. Because initially death was not in the original plan, but man, because he had free will, chose and selected a path that death and suffering was in. But God still utilized that platform that we created to teach you a lesson. Ultimate love is protecting that which you love. If you have something, some jewelry, you put it up and you put it in a jewelry box. If you have money, you put it in a bank or you put it in a vault and you protect it because you love it or you have a respect for or value for it. But the only reason you love it because there's a chance that you can lose it. So suffering and pain randomly happens in chaotic events in order for us to experience the greatest feeling of all time and it's love. I read Job. And I thought I understood everything until God responded to Job and he told Job that, Job, you're right. No God is going to punish you like this without a reason. And it's not that you did wrong, but I have something better and greater for you. Job lost his whole family. And his family, his children were partiers. They were feasting all the time. So that party shows a state of negligence and non-concern of life because sometimes you cannot protect anything that has so much negligence to it. So we lost that which was negligent and now God gave him more. So if you lost a child, you lost anything, a family member, it gave you purpose, it gave you desire to do something greater in your life. When you, that patriarch or that matriarch in that family is dying, you come gather around it. You show tremendous amount of love, but that's because only the threat of death allow you to come together. So the perfect design, and maybe not all the time we understand these things, but the perfect design of suffering and pain gives us the greatest feeling in the world, which is love. Thank you. Hit the like button.